Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Rassi Rasmus is set to announce his first uh, squad to take on Ireland this weekend, tomorrow on Tuesday. And what a game it's going to be. Uh, Conor Murray coming out and saying Ireland are here for one reason and one reason only, and that is a clean sweep of victories. Ireland aiming for a 2-0 series win against uh, the Springboks. The Springboks at Loftus this weekend. Uh, Fortress Loftus uh, is the highest winning percentage they have of all stadiums in South Africa. Almost an 80% win rate at Loftus and uh, will be desperate to make sure they get over the line this weekend with a victory, which means obviously the series will then um, be at the very least uh, drawn if they were to lose in Durban. Um, and lots of big decisions for Rassi Rasmus to make with regards to the team he will select and announce tomorrow. Before we get into way, what I think it's going to look like as to and as and as well to, as to why I think it's going to look like, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel. Lots of big decisions. Who starts at 10, for example? Who starts at number 8? Uh, what is the bench going to look like? 6, 2, 5, 3, 7, 1. What is the split going to look like? Um, you know, what's the starting front row versus the bomb squad? The impact players, for example, the style of play. You know, how much is Tony Brown going to potentially influence selection? as well as the way we play. These are all factors um, that we have to now start to contend with. But at the same time, I think there is a certain amount of what's not broken um, does need to be fixed, basically, type of thing. And uh, I do think Rusty Rasmus is going to go with a pretty familiar uh, 23. I think there will obviously be, be, be differences from what we saw last year during the World Cup. Um, you know, certain players being unavailable, certain players that were retired. But I do think that on the whole, we are going to see much of uh, the same with regards to, to some of the players we will see. So in terms of my predicted 15, let's have a look. There it is. So let's go through it, shall we? See, Khaleesi was basically confirmed as captain and starting last week. He, when Rusty Osmus came out and said that he will start at six, he will be the captain, he's not fat, etc. So that is something we know will definitely happen. Um, I do think that uh, Richek Baditwe or Oxen Che is going to start, as well as Malcolm Marks, who I think had a bit of a, a slow game getting back into things against uh, Wales, but I do think that they will start once again. Similarly for, for sort of players coming back from injury, they like to start them, um, and if things are going badly, they can always put, take them off and bring on Bongi Manambi, who's obviously been playing a lot more uh, cricket recently. Uh, Frost Mahoeva has always been a bit of a starter, not really a bomb squad member. He was set to start against Wales before we realised that it was Vince Fact, Vincent Cox's 50th cap. And uh, as a result, that was swapped. So I expect him to come in. Even if Smith, for me, will start next to Franco Moss. I think that's pretty much a given. Um, those two formed the lock partnership for yes, the entire World Cup last year. So if he's coming in number six, means that Quacker Smith has dropped out of the starting 15. He will partner PSD for Toy. And for me, it'll be Evan Ruiz, the leading candidate in the number eight jersey. No Jasper Vita, despite being in the squad. You know, your other options are Quacker Smith or a, uh, a, a Pepsi Butch Lazy, but I don't really see that being the case. I think Evan Lewis will get back. I think Fife Clerk will start next to Andre Pollard. I think Sash Fahim Gonzalo makes the bench. Uh, I don't think we're going to see him starting yet, for example. I don't think we're going to suddenly see, um, you know, Sasha, who is a, a prodigious talent, go from coming off the bench for 22 minutes against Wales at fly half to suddenly starting at fly half against uh, Ireland. You know, that's would be wild if it did happen, but I don't think we're going to see the box put him in that kind of position um, at the moment. Um, and I think in terms of the wings, we're going to see, I think it's the same, uh, sort of a similar back three to the World Cup, where it's going to be a Chesney Colby in the number 11 jersey, Kurt Lawrence in the number 14, Billy LaRue will start at 15 as far as I'm concerned. Um, yes, Alfred Fats had a great game against Wales, but especially with Andre Pollard starting, Billy LaRue is so important to get in that attack going. And elsewhere, the other change I see is Damien Daylandy will start at 12, Jesse Creel at 13. Lakanya Am is in the squad, but I don't think um, his, his season... Um, is going to do enough to uh, to dislodge Jesse Creel, who once again was so, so good against Wales. He's got that third team jersey back, and uh, Lakanya Am's going to have to come and take it away from him. He will get his chances for Lakanya Am, which is what happened previously. You know, Lakanya Am into the squad when Jesse Creel very much had the third team jersey on lockdown, and Lakanya Am just sort of made himself undroppable. So he's going have to have to have to work through that once again, because that's what Jesse Creel's done. He waited for his opportunity for how many years, and now he's made himself. Uh, undroppable. If you look at the bench, I've gone with a 6 2 split. Uh, Bongi Manambi, Trevor Nikani, Franz Mohova. I wonder about Trevor Nikani, whether we might not see Achaos Stenekamp, who's, uh, who's been playing obviously a lot more at loose head. Um, uh, also, potentially Thomas Toy. So I think that that kind of the decision over loose head remains a little bit um, up, for, up for debate. 
Um, however, uh, I do think it's going to be Vincent Cock who will be in that number, uh, at that, that reserve tight end role. He's always done it um, over the last few years. And as long as he's fit, he will be there. Uh, okay, Sam will come off the bench. I think that's pretty much a given. Um, I'll be very interested to see if we do a 6-2 split, what we go with. I'd go with Ben Jason Dixon. I think he's a player who covers flank as well as lock. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we potentially see a Sal Murat and we literally go with that sort of that orthodox two locks, one sort of flank. Uh, and then one thing, for, which for me is a certain, is Quaker Smith. If we were to go with a 5-3 split, then I believe it'll be Arkes Naaman and Quaker Smith as the two players off the bench. Uh, Grant Williams has generally been that this come up coming off the bench. Kubas Ranoch has often started um, when Fafta Kurt's not been available, but I'd be surprised if we see him um, uh, off the bench. So I do think it'll be Grant Williams. And then I think, you know, again, we're talking about the 6-2 split and the enablers for the 6-2 split. Sasha Fahmer Gomezulu holds the key to that um, in terms of being able to play 10 12, 15, um, and uh, very much, you know, will be deputizing for the role that Damien Willemser has um, has has uh, filled over these last years. So that's what I've gone with. What do you think? What changes would you make? Where do you think Rasky Erasmus might change? I don't think we're going to see a 7-1 split. If we were, it would probably be a similar thing to the World Cup in terms of asking Chase and Colby Wolf if you needed to, could you operate at 9 um, you could throw in a Sol Murat as well onto the bench and then just have a Sash Fahmy Gomezulu. I don't think we'll necessarily have to take that risk. I think it'll be a bit unnecessary. Um, but we'll wait and see. Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.